Hey. Oh, you're matching my outfit. Am I matching you or are you matching me? You see, I'm colorblind, so I'm going to have to trust your judgment. You're colorblind? For yes. real? I only see 5.6% of the colors that a normal person sees. And I asked you to wear the color that is the color of your soul. Exactly. Then Which, how did you know this is the color of your soul? Because with 5.6%, you can still make out tiny little shades. So I know this is like a bluish thingy. Uh-huh. But you know, I can't even see colors like purple. I have no concept of that. Wow. It's so funny how we all see the world in different ways. Maybe I can show you some other colors. Maybe. Let's go see if we can figure out some other colors. Come on in. All right. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad and, to be here. And I'm so glad that uh, manifestation of your dreams mm -hmm. is actually a true thing and I'm living proof of that because you may not know this but let me tell you what we're doing here right now about um, when about a month ago I started to reconnect with my true self mm -hmm. again right and remembered myself as who I used to be before I had a major T trauma which was the loss of my dad right I used to be able to access a level of my subconscious or whatever it was called. I didn't know what the name of it was at the time that would give me some intuition into what was coming up. Right. And that intuition gave me the message 24 hours before I lost my dad, that my dad's going to get killed. I saw mm -hmm. it. I attended his funeral. I even saw how he's going to get killed. And I was in London. I called him and say, Hey, tomorrow you're going to die. And he's like, you're crazy. You told that to your yeah, dad. Yeah. Tomorrow you're going you're gonna to die. die. Yeah. I called him wow. from London. I said, you're going to die. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, get out of Iran. Come to London. And he's like, you lost your mind again. You're homesick again. You want to come see me? I'm like, yeah. I get on the first flight. I go back home. Within 24 hours, my dad passed away. And I'm so glad that whatever you call it, whether I was unconsciously accessing a part of my mind that was right. warning me and getting me ready. I'm so glad I had that warning sign because otherwise I don't know what would have happened to me. So anyways, I go back to Iran, he gets killed. And he was murdered by the Iranian regime. Murdered by the Iranian regime. And then I, uh, and I just, in that moment, I consciously asked the universe to stop sending me messages, which was the biggest regret of my life. Because from age 19 to 29, wow. which was last year, I'm 30 now. I had 10 years of not being connected to my true self. No messages, absolute disconnect from the source. Mm -hmm. Couldn't hear anything, couldn't hear, even hear my in, internal voice. And then about two months ago, my darling, my darling mentor, my Buddha, right. Dr. Shafali, right. sends me to a course, to an intensive course. After 15 months of holding my hand tight, that woman really, I have no words for it the level of respect i have for this woman for 15 months she held my hand every single day she said megan i'm committed to waking you up mm -hmm. you are gonna wake up so she sends me to an intensive course she says okay we're almost at a level where i'm i feel like you kind of healed mm -hmm. i want you to just go to this course and take your he uh, healing in your own hands i go to the course the messages come back after 10 years and this time I'm beyond grateful because this time I understand what it takes to be disconnected right. from the source. Because once we're disconnected from the source, nothing else matters because everything else we will be doing on this dimension would be just monkey mind, hustle, 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 right? So I'm thankful to the universal consciousness for allowing me to connect again. And I hope it stays that I hope I deserve to stay on that vibration anyways. So I start to hear the messages again. Then a video pops on my Facebook and it's a guy called Vision mm -hmm. talking about the Silva method and it resonates because I'm like, oh, this is the altered state of mind that I used exactly. to go into starting age five and lost it. So I reach out to you. I say, hey, I want to learn from you. I have, I, I resonate with you and you're like, tell me more. And I didn't know how to tell you this. So I said, I'll tell him when I see him. Right. Then I wrote to Dr. Shafali and I said, hey, I think this guy understands what I'm saying. Then I wait on it. Then mm -hmm. a week later, I go to an event at, at, a, at San Vicente Bungalows. I don't know if you've been. No. Membership club in LA. There's a guy called Jason talking there, right? 
And then he sits with me and he's like, hey, I want you to meet a friend of mine. His name is Vision. Jason's one of my best friends. I, right. I didn't even know who Jason was. So I'm like, okay, great. And I know you, right? right. And I decided that I'm going to manifest this whole thing. So we'll meet. Then the week after I go to Burning Man, right? I went with so much resistance. I uh -huh. didn't want to go. I was not willing to fully let go, to enjoy the experience. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to not work out. So I land. Uh -huh. Within an hour, I decide that I want to leave. Getting out of there is almost impossible. I went through hell to get a plane, land on in the middle of the playa uh -huh. so I can get out. And as I'm leaving, I see you and Peter Kell. Okay? Right. I looked at you guys, I'm like, not here. The energy of this place is not right. I want to connect oh, with him. I wish you had approached me at Burning Man. It but just, you I leave. just wanted it to be right. this. Right. This is the setup I yeah. wanted to and connect with And here I am, you. and I didn't know that story. Here I am, and this pendant I'm wearing, this is, this is not bling, this is my Burning Man camp pendant. Maxa wow. camp, I was in the Mexican camp. Wow. So I see you, and I leave, and I'm like, but I don't want to meet him there. I want to meet uh -huh. him here, so I can right. this setup. Next to a grand piano. Next to a grand a piano. With air conditioning, <laughs> exactly. with no dust. <laughs> and then I come back to LA, and then I'm hearing that you're coming to town, and Jason invites me to your event. At the same time, I'm looking for a manager to work with. Right. Randomly, I get introduced to a guy called Vinny, mm -hmm. right? Vinny says, like I talked to Vinny one time, he's in Brooklyn. He says, I have this feeling that there is a girl called Natasha that you have to connect to. Uh -huh. I'm like, okay. He connects us. I don't actually write back to right. Natasha. I come to your event, Natasha's there. Right? Right, so I Natasha's on her. stage. Mm -hmm. Natasha's on stage. I connected with her. And That's great. And then Natasha told you that you needed to meet me. Correct. <laughs> You want more synchronicity? So, so the funny thing is, I, I've, I quit Silicon Valley to teach meditation. And the style of meditation I was teaching was Silva Ultramine. It, it's now on Mind Valley. But it's a form of meditation that's about training yourself for intuition. And that's how I wrote my books. That's how I created my company. It's listening to that voice within. But here's the interesting thing. Uh -huh. And this is something that we cannot prove by science, right? Sometimes the messages come to you from intuition, mm -hmm. but very often the messages come tr to you through physical reality, through stumbling upon a book, through uh -huh. a person mentioning, you ought to meet this person, you ought to go here. And so the messages come, and it's not just about intuition, it's about observing and listening and noticing patterns. Typically the messages repeat themselves. So maybe we are supposed to meet because you ended up sitting next to my best friend, Natasha, Jason told you to meet me, Natasha told you to meet me, you spotted me on Burning Man. Maybe that is a physical form of guidance. But I've always been fascinated by this and I've lived my life listening to these things. Mm -hmm. How do you, how can you tell if, it's your in, if a message is coming from your intuition or your ego? So, my favorite poem is by Rumi. Mm -hmm. And Rumi talks about this in a really interesting way. I've been fascinated by the idea of surrender, of putting an intention out there, and then being in a place of stillness and trusting that if your intention is aligned, the world will move, will bend, reality will bend to bring that intention out. And the Rumi said this, when I chase after what I want, my life is a furnace of stress and anxiety. But if I sit in my place of patience, what I want comes to me without any pain. Mm -hmm. From this I realize that what I want wants me too, is searching for me, is loving me. There is a great secret in this mm -hmm. for anyone who would listen. So I believe what the Rumi is saying is that there's a part of our intention that comes from our, our mind, and this can often be wrong intention. Michael Beckwith calls it immature wanting. Mm -hmm. Immature wanting is, oh, you see something on television, you decide, I want that jacket, I want that car. Then there's mature wanting, which is what Rumi is talking about. Mature wanting comes from the soul. And that which you want, wants you back. It could be that calling, right? That business, like I think you were meant 
to create The Megan Palmer Show because mm -hmm. you're inspiring so many women. I was meant to create Mind Valley. Sometimes you are meant to meet a certain someone. Mm -hmm. That thing wants you to, is calling for you, is whispering towards you. And these whispers might be intuition, but they might be a recommendation from another human being. They might be a book you stumble upon. Mm -hmm. They might be you spotting someone in a playa at Burning Man. The universe whispers to you. It was Elizabeth Gilbert in her book, Big Magic. She wrote this amazing, amazing paragraph, my favorite paragraph in the entire book, and I'm paraphrasing it, but she says, the universe, when it seeks to create something, will come and whisper to you, and the universe does not play favorites. It'll whisper to you, it'll whisper to someone else, it'll whisper to someone else. The universe doesn't care whether you act on it or not. The universe simply wants to express itself. But if you hear that whisper, act on it. Because if you act on it, the universe is gonna give you all the support and resources you need to make that true. And, and I think that's the way the world works. Mm -hmm. I remember interviewing Matthew McConaughey. He said something similar. He said, the target attracts the arrow. The target already exists. If you're willing to shoot that arrow, the target will attract the arrow. So that's how I kind of try to live my life, listening to that intuition, but also listening to the whispers, the nudging, the poking, the prodding of this larger entity that I call the universe. Wow. So let's backtrack to vision at Michigan University studying mm -hmm. engineering, right? Right. How did you transition from that to starting Mind Valley? In a really horrible, stupid way. Right? Amazing. Mess up after mess up after fuckery after getting fired from multiple jobs being completely broke, blowing all my father's money. But what happened is, in 2001, after a series of repetitive, stupid decisions, I found myself in Silicon Valley. I'd lost $30,000 that my dad had loaned me. Mm -hmm. I had been fired from the company I was working for, and I had crashed my car against a minivan because I couldn't afford to fix the brakes. My brakes were rusty. Um, I didn't have insurance. I had to beg the, the woman on the other line to just give me a break and help me cover the $6,000 in damage for my car and the minivan. And I couldn't pay rent, so I had a generous friend who offered me a couch. And so it was in that midst that I was scrambling to find any means to earn money. And finally, I found a job where I had to pick up the phone and dial for dollars, meaning I had to pitch software to lawyers in Texas. And if a lawyer said yes and bought that software, it was maybe a $2,000 package. I got about two, two grand, sorry, not two grand, 20%. And that was how I had to eat. First month, no sales. Second month, no sales. Third month, just barely surviving. And then I decided to take a class on by Jose Silva, Silva Ultramine. Silva had passed away in 1999, but this was 2001 and a teacher in LA was teaching the class. And that's when I learned to really go deep into intuition. So what I started doing was this, and this is what started my fascination with the still voice within. Mm -hmm. So back then we used the yellow pages. So you had to call every number of every lawyer in San Antonio from A to Z. And I remember I learned that you could, you could go in, you could go within, and I would just imagine and pretend as if I could move my hands down the yellow pages and feel an impulse of who to call. And then I would call that person. And my sales doubled overnight. That was interesting, it doubled overnight by playing this simple guessing game, moving my hands down the yellow pages and wondering, should I call this person? Then I tried another technique that I learned from Silva. And this technique is basically where you imagine as if you can connect with another person across time and space. I so, did that with you. You did? I learned so, that from you, then tried it on you. And that's what got me here. Yeah. Yes, it's sort of like a, a spiritual missed call, right? So it, but, it was a miss actually, you responded. <laughs> exactly. But it's it's like you get that missed call and you're like, oh I gotta call that person back. And uh -huh. and that's how we got connected. And so I love that technique. One of my most beautiful quotes on love is by Rumi and he says this, I can close my eyes and talk to you in a thousand silent ways. And so we can do this with people. We can do this with our children. We can do this with our lovers. We can feel someone across time and space and we can give love across time and space. But back then, I wasn't concerned with giving love. I was concerned with connecting with the right lawyer. Now, I would set an intention. If this sale 
is going to benefit your law firm and benefit our company, let's make it so. And again, I doubled my sales. And so my sales started growing like crazy and my boss came to me and he said, what are you doing? And I said, I think they call it intuition. And he goes, now nah, that's bullshit, but can you keep doing it? Mm -hmm. And so at 26, I became a vice president of sales. My career was riding high. And then after 18 months, I had a calling to quit. This is confession time for right. me, both to you and to my audience. A little while ago, I don't want to say a long time ago, a little while ago, I decided that I'm going to commit to only talk about people and products and businesses on my show that I have personally tried, uh -huh. personally had got results so I can then I can talk to other people about mm -hmm. it because I feel like it's a sacred thing right. if something hasn't worked for me and if I promote it to my audience even though it might work for them but it's not authentic to me right so I decided to prioritize authenticity to money and right. I'm so happy because since I've done that actually the blessings they, they start to shower you with you the reason i didn't approach you at burning man the reason i didn't ask to have you right. on my show on instagram when i first connected with you is because i listened to your uh -huh. uh, message on facebook about the silver method and i said i'm going to use it on him i said i'm going to listen right. to him use it on him and see if it works and you're here because it did work yeah it's crazy how intention works right back to your story so, so you had a calling to quit. So I had a the calling to quit job. and I became a meditation teacher. And that's all I was doing for five years, like not earning much money, but teaching mm -hmm. meditation, teaching this ability for people to go deep and listen to that voice within. And um, then eventually from that, the universe had other plans for me. I started a festival called A-Fest, which blew up and then Mind Valley emerged. Then I started writing books and all of those came, every single one of those, the festival, the New York Times bestselling book, Mind Valley, came from a moment of crisis where I was doing something which I thought was right and something would come and just slam me. And I'd be miserable for days or months and then something new would emerge. And that's kind of how I live life right now. I trust that if I get too obsessed with something, but there's something greater that the universe wants from me, remember the target attracts the arrow something is going to come and pull me away and put me into this new, this new way of life. So that's what brought me here. Well, so it is a lot of times, especially right now, we get bombarded on social media right. with different methods, different techniques, like listen to your inner voice. And I just want everybody to know that it is real. It's your journey back to yourself. And this is living proof of that. Vish and I, this is the first time we're meeting in person. Uh -huh. And I, this was not arranged in a sense of like, you know what I mean? Like a yeah. long, uh, like me reaching out to you months ago and arranging this right. interview and all the like nitty gritty uh, thing, which we usually do for our interviews, uh -huh. right? We have to set things up way ahead of time. Right. This happened like that, authentically. So yeah, I you told me to show up. You told me what to wear. And you showed up. Yeah. Well, I asked you to wear what is authentic to your soul and that was a bathrobe. Yes, so let's just say I, I that you didn't. That wouldn't be appropriate on this <laughs> show. No. <laughs> it just didn't go well. It, it was not authentic yeah. to bear your soul. True. It okay. would be, <laughs> <laughs> Megan told me, wear whatever your bare soul wants you to wear. And I'm like, that would be a bathrobe. That's what I, that's what I was lounging at doing my work in my hotel room this morning. Uh -huh. But I came dressed up for you to be fancy. Uh, me too. Listen, come on. I'm, I, I tried to. So we made an effort for each other. Okay, so at this point, Mind Valley is formed, it's your baby. Right. Is it your baby? No, 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 no. I'm its baby. Aha, uh -huh. so it's bigger than you. Exactly, exactly. I believe Mind Valley is something that if I didn't create, someone else created. Mm -hmm. Someone else would have created it, was meant to emerge in the world. And so mm -hmm. I have no ego attached to it. Mm -hmm. Why I say I'm its baby, it's because it makes me. Sri Kumar Rao says, your obsession should never be your business. Your mm -hmm. obsession should be your personal growth. It should never be your business. Your bi business, he says, and by the way, Sri Kumar Rao is one of the top MBA professors in the world. He says, what is missing from America's MBA programs is this idea. Your business is not the most important thing. Your personal growth is. Your business, though, is nothing but the greatest vehicle for your personal growth. So Mind Valley made me, I'm its baby, because as I'm building it, and it, I believe, chose me, 
I'm learning, I'm growing. I'm learning new ways of leadership. I'm learning how to take care of my health so I can show up to work every day. I'm learning how to connect with people in a different way. I'm learning how to speak, how to present. I'm its baby. Is Wine Valley your obsession? My obsession? My obsession. Your obsession. No, not at all. My obsession is life. It's discovering personal growth. It's discovering myself. Mind Valley is nothing more than a vehicle that m helps me be at the right place, learn the right skills, but your business should never be your obsession. Uh -huh. It kills you if you make it your obsession. Why? Because you end up giving everything to your business to the point where you take away from so many other pleasures of life. Being a parent, being in love, travel, uh -huh. adventure, health. Wow. That's my obsession. My obsession is to just master life, to live life, and to live life as, as beautifully as I can, every dimension of life. The business is just one tenth of it. Uh huh. And then when I was, so I went to um, Vision's event last weekend in LA, Mind Valley, where we didn't connect in person. That was intentional too, right. by the way. Um, I wanted it down to the T. I wanted to see the Silva method and how accurately it works. Right. So I, it was the first time that I witnessed something at a big seminar. You had hundreds of people. A thousand people. A yeah. thousand people. Wow, there were a thousand people. It was my first time at, a, at an event, at a festival, at a seminar, whatever uh -huh. you call it, that there was no separation between the speakers and the crowd. Right, we do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It was an interactive experience where the audience was one with the speaker. Right. How did you, how, well, well, that, that's an invention, in my opinion. You're a trailblazer mm -hmm. in that. How did you decide about that shift? So, so Mind Valley is so different from so many other personal growth mm -hmm. companies out there. The borders, the walls are completely removed. Correct. Unity is our overriding principle. And so what happens is if you come to a Mind Valley event, and we do a massive three week event in Estonia called Mind Valley University, mm -hmm. and everybody gets an app and you can see the thousands of other people who are there. You can connect with people. The speakers are on the app, you're on the app. Everyone attends together and you bring your kids along too because they're classes wow. for kids. Now anybody can put in a proposal for a talk and we choose people that we put on stage. But even if you don't get a stage, you, we take over the entire city. Anybody can give a talk in a cafe or yoga studio. It's completely free forming. So we just had it in Tallinn, Estonia. 1,600 people moved there for about three weeks. And just like Burning Man, everyone co-creates and participates. I'm there with my eight-year-old daughter. She's attending talks with the students of, of, of the kids of other students. And everyone is just free and accessible. There is no border. In Mind Valley, it's very hard to understand who is a teacher, who is a student, who is an employee of the company. Everything is just part of one beautiful, amazing soup mm -hmm. of humanity. I couldn't tell. When I was there, I couldn't tell if someone's a speaker or the founder or, the, right. or the, the, somebody who's attending. I couldn't tell. And I loved it because I personally, one of the things that troubles me is when I listen to a truth seeker, uh -huh. let's call it a wisdom teacher, whatever we name it, I, if I see a dense ego within that right. person, which by default, no matter who you are as a wisdom seeker, if you're, in the, if you're embodied as a human being, right. you have an ego. Yeah. Now, how fluid your ego is is a different story, but I get distracted by the ego of that person who right. is preaching something or teaching right. something. And at Mind Valley, I didn't see any egos. Yeah. I didn't see any egos. I saw you, you were transitioning between the audience and the stage as if it was all one flat area. Right. You know what I mean? Stage, audience, going all the way out to the audience, coming back on the stage, bringing everybody with you on the stage. Everybody felt like a star. Right. When you said that you get proposals from your um, people that are attending to come and give a speech, you make everybody feel like a star at right. Mind Valley. And I create guidelines, of course, like I don't talk about business. I don't want to hear any business ideas. I don't want to hear about your company. I'm not investing in anything. So I have these guidelines. But then within the context of the guidelines. So here's the other thing. I work with the energy of the space. Uh -huh. To me, when collective human beings come together, there's an energy. Now we program that energy for certain feelings, emotions. Unity, community, mm -hmm. love, insight, transformation. These are 
energy patterns that we program there, just like you've heard of those experiments with blessing water, you can bless a space and we create that in that room. And that's why it feels the way it feels. Mm -hmm. But with unity as our overriding value for the mm -hmm. company, that's what creates that feeling. The reason for unity is because I was, I mean, I went through some crazy shit in my life. Mm -hmm. Racism at a level you cannot believe. And wow. that is why unity became the governing value in everything I build. So even in our office in Mind Valley, we have one office with people from 60 different nationalities. In wow, it. and where is that office based That's at? in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Wow. Well, it was before the pandemic. Then of course the pandemic came and tore apart the idea of the office. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And during the pandemic, since you couldn't hold any events, how did Mind Valley transform itself? During the pandemic, Mind Valley became completely virtual. Mm -hmm. We built an online platform that blew up and we started bringing in all of these amazing teachers to teach transformation through the online platform. And it became more or less like the Netflix of personal growth. Yeah. As an individual, mm -hmm. when I was watching you, I was thinking to myself, how can I create a personalized growth journey for myself right. utilizing the platforms you have built? Yeah. I want a roadmap because for our audience, everybody who's watching, I know you want to be a part of this and I encourage you to be a part of this because this makes you come closer to your authentic self. I'm not encouraging you to be a part of Vision's movement because of it, you, you're going to achieve anything. All you're going to achieve is coming back to your true self. Vision's platforms, in my personal mm -hmm. experience, enables you and creates a safe environment for you to come back to your authentic self. And let me tell you something. Once you meet your authentic self, there is no better soulmate, no better lover, no better mother, brother, sister, anybody in the world that feels as delicious as the connection with your authentic self. Right. Can I, can I tell you what I'm really, really, really trying to do? Yes. Every company, according to Peter Thiel, has what the public thinks they're doing, but what they're secretly building. Uh -huh. What I'm secretly building, and not even all my employees know this because it's that deep. What I'm secretly building is a soulmate engine. So let me tell you what wow. this means. Here's what Mind Valley is really trying to do. Mm -hmm. So we just uh, brought in a company. We just acquired part, a large chunk of a company called Lifebook. Lifebook is America's greatest goal setting system. Uh -huh. 70,000 70, people have done a done a life book and life book is a process where you go really deep into your soul and you write a hundred page book of everything you want to experience in life all the way till you die the quality wow. of love the quality of parenting if you want to have kids where you want to live how you want to live the type of body you want how you want to take care of your body your mission your career you go deep into understanding the emotional states you want to experience the character traits you want to experience the love you want to give the world it is so detailed and it's created by my friends john and missy butcher so i just became a co-founder of lifebook after promoting it and talking about it for many years now when you have a lifebook we're now building an artificial intelligence called eve eve is named after my daughter and wow. EVE stands for Everyone Elevates. Everyone Elevates. We're able to look at everybody's life book and then understand things about yourself. Now, when we understand your life book, we, we have our AI called EVE now help you design your life. And so EVE will now be able to tell you, okay, you want to have these persistent emotional states. You want to be a mother. These are the programs that are going to help you on Mind Valley. And so on Mind Valley, we have 61 teachers from May Musk, who's Elon's mother, to Shafali Sabari, to Sadhguru. And we create the curriculum for you based on how you want to grow. But even that is just the beginning. So let's go on to the soulmate engine. When we know that much about you, when we know what you are studying and how you want to grow, growth is the number one thing I believe that brings soulmates together. Now, when I say soulmate here, I don't just mean lover, I mean business partner, I mean mentor, I mean teacher. Now, if we know that you want to hike Nepal, that you wanna have two kids, that you want to build a life where you are constantly going on road trips and adventures, 
if we find someone else who matches that, our AI theoretically should be able to bring you guys together. Eventually, what I believe is that the AI will also be able to learn who you're connecting with, who you're not connecting with. Now, how do we know that? Because of how you chat with someone on Correct. the app. And this feedback loop makes the AI smarter and smarter. So while so many people are afraid of artificial intelligence, you know, taking away our humanity, we want to use AI to bring people humanity together. Humanity closer to unity. Exactly, unity. Wow. But the key thing is, not only are we bringing people closer, but the reason you connect with someone and then you break up is because many people are not whole. They're going through their traumas, they're going through their issues. We're helping heal people through the right education and then bringing whole, conscious, people who are dedicated to themselves together. This is not for everyone, but the people who get this, this is so important to them. Loneliness is, is on the rise everywhere. But if we can take, we believe we can end loneliness for human beings. And that's really what Mind Valley is building. Now this is five years out. This is five years out and we're taking steps to get there. But that really is what we're trying to do, connect people connect souls who are meant to come together. You're trying to end loneliness. It doesn't get prettier than that. And bring people together. Across cultures, across age, across political affiliations, because that is the number one thing, I believe, that can help us heal the world. And by the way, if you look at the studies, when you're connected to someone, your happiness level goes up. Your health, you know, in the Blue Zone studies, when they looked at pe people in places that were living way past 100, one of the biggest things, the biggest thing, was community. Happiness, the biggest thing, strength of social connections. That was a Harvard study. Productivity at work, the biggest thing. Do you have a friend at work? Mm -hmm. All of these things, when you bring people together, we become better. Problems go away. Healing occurs. But we're living in a world that's designed to tear us apart. When you... Oh, wow. I'm so fascinated. So when you said the process is designed by Dr. Shafali, who's one of the top wisdom teachers, clinical psychologists in the world, mm -hmm. um, how do they participate in creating that customized blueprints to that individual's personality? So right now, you would go to mindvalley.com and you'd, you'd get a Mindvalley membership and you'd get the education, but very soon you'd be able to go to mindvalley.com forward slash lifebook, add on the goal setting component, and probably in about a year, two years, we'll be merging both. Your goals, this 100-page book of yours, will help determine your education. And about a year after that, we'll bring in the soulmate engine and help figure out who you should connect with. And I think this is going to be like the ultimate dating app. And the, uh, the eng each engine, the curriculums, they're designed by people like Shafali and exactly. Shadguru. Okay, These so are you bring the top teachers. experts. These are the top teachers. Uh -huh. You want to be a parent, you learn from Shafali. You want to unravel, remove all the barriers to your spiritual soul really shining, you might learn from Shadguru, Reverend Michael correct, Beckwith yeah. or Sadhguru or Neil Donald Walsh. You want to get fit, you learn from brilliant fitness trainers who teach you how to optimize your body. Wow, so that's, that's going to be the ultimate, that's going to be a, a, an app to really find your soulmate. And it's really important. I always tell girls, your soulmate is not necessarily a Prince Charming. Your soulmate can be your, a sister, can be your mentor, can right. be your teacher, can be your... And it's so interesting because as little girls, we grow up to... Uh, feel wholesome once we find the Prince Charming, right? Yeah. The Sleeping Beauty stay asleep until right. the Prince Charming kisses her and wakes her up. But Maleficent, which I'm really glad uh -huh. it came out for the new generation, right. says that the soul, the Sleeping Beauty soulmate was actually Maleficent because it was another woman that exactly. got behind her, held her hand and walked her through life. And uh, I'm so glad that you guys are creating this movement where it will end loneliness. This will end loneliness right. and will create the sense of community and tribe because one thing we all learned during this mm -hmm. pandemic, food, shelter, and water right. is easier to find than connection and intimacy. Yes. And as mammals, we don't, we won't survive without intimacy. We right. won't. Our, we might survive on a physical level, but on a, an a, a emotional level, we die. Yeah. There are a lot of people outside. I walk as I as I walk on the streets every day, zombied out, zombied out, and they've achieved and they have the they have abundance on the outside, right. but on the inside, they don't feel. 
Yeah. And I think one thing that's really important right now is for us to put forces behind anything that enables people to feel comfortable to feel, right. hear their inner voice. And I'm so excited about this. I'm yeah. so excited about and your You movement. said something really interesting. You said, you said when you truly find yourself, that is the most amazing soulmate, right? Mm. And that's why personal growth is such an important, such an important aspect. You don't want to just randomly connect people together. You want to first make people understand that if you want to meet your soulmate, you got to really, really be the best human being you can be. You don't want to meet people that complete you, that Jerry Maguire bullshit, that's not what it's about. It's got, it's got about you completing yourself and then using that completed version of you to go and help co-elevate someone else. Dear ladies, I want to talk to you about Eve. Eve as Vision's daughter, Eve as the AI system who's gonna find you, who's gonna help you find your soulmate through Mind Valley. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about the story of Eve that picked the apple, gave it to Adam, and they got kicked out of heaven. Right. right. They tell us why women as collective psyche, we have so much shame. Guess why? Because we were born knowing that us as Eve, we are all Eve within us picked the wrong apple, gave it to the man, and we got kicked out of heaven. Which is why, he, as fem female-born people, as a collective psyche, we carry so much sex sexual shame and trauma. It all goes back to Eve, to Mother Nature. And in a very full circle way, the mm -hmm. fact that you chose this name Eve comes back right. to the fact that everything does go back to Eve, to Mother Nature. Because in the end of the day, even the word man comes out right. of woman. And what you're doing is you're really completing the cycle of life for us to heal this shameful generational trauma that we all carry as women. Because once women heal, right. we're going to carry men like our babies that we carry in our wombs. And we're going to give birth to them, not in a sense of, the, not in the physical realm, but we're going to back them and allow them to be their true selves instead of putting all the a dump and responsibilities of the world on their shoulders and be like, oh, I need to like, You're right. I need to lean on you. Mm -hmm. We're gonna say, come on in. I'm Eve, arms wide open. This time, I got you. Right, and it's so beautiful that you shared that. One of the things that drive Mind Valley. so Mind Valley, the majority of our, of our managers are women, majority of our customers are women, but around five years ago, the, the American philosopher, Barbara Marx Hubbard, She's a legendary philosopher, she passed away. But before she passed away, she called me up one night, in the middle of the night, it was midnight, and she was already going through her sickness, and she was not able to fully be coherent. But she said this, she said, Vision, there's something very, very, very important I need you to do with Mind Valley. So I'm like, Barbara, tell me. And I didn't understand it that, but she says, you need to help create a world where more women are leading businesses, governments, countries, because that is what we need to create a better world. And then Barbara, who wrote the book Evolutionary Woman, she passed away uh, after that. And so one of the biggest things we've been doing at Mind Valley is recruiting these women teachers. Shafali Sabari, who's inspired you as one. Mae Musk, who's Elon's mother. Mm -hmm. I just finished directing and producing a program with her for women over 40, which is about inspiring women to get back in the workforce mm -hmm. and, and bring in feminine energy into politics, into government, into the workplace. And May is a force of nature. She's 72 years old. And so this has been a really important driving force of mind body. We don't talk about it that much, but now that you mentioned it, this is part of the DNA of the platform that we are building. Mm -hmm. This is going back to Eve. Right. We're and all that's going why back to Eve. Eve is such a beautiful name. It is. Everything was by design. Mother Nature represents Mother Nature. Yeah. It represents that feminine energy that's missing in our governments, in our political platforms, which kind of, that's why the whole world got a little yeah. unbalanced. And, and we're not saying male energy is bad. It's just that it's imbalanced, it's right? It's imbalanced. There are three male politicians for every one female politician. Correct. And we need to bring that into right. balance. One last thing. I can't get enough of you, but one last thing I wanted to ask. I want you to talk to my audience, people that uh -huh. are watching you right now. Give them a few steps to take action to become a part of your movement at Mind Valley. So, 
So firstly, you could tr try following me on Instagram at Vision, uh, V-I-S-H-E-N. But you might also want to check out my new book, The Six Phase Meditation Method, which is a protocol I designed to put you in the most amazing states of being so that you are blissed out, you are happy, you're connected to yourself and to other people, you're manifesting and you're creating magic in your life, almost like you have, like you have Tinkerbell on your shoulder, just blessing the heck out of everything that you touch. So the six phase meditation, it's available on Amazon. You can check it out at, uh, on my Instagram, at vision, click on link in bio. And uh, I hope it brings amazing service to your life. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I can't wait to be yeah. a part of your journey. Thank you. <laughs> can I get a hug? Yes, absolutely. I prefer that so much to a fist bump. Oh, you're amazing, Megan. Wow. Cool, right? Yeah. I love it.